Huh? I gotta hit record. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Community Board 12's meeting, monthly meeting. Our theme for this year is moving forward together. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're all going to move forward together. And I just want us to take like about 15 seconds just to remember all the community leaders that we've had before. I want you to remember all the community leaders that we currently have that's still with us that we should, you know, just pay some acknowledgement to them, those who have gone on before us. And, um, you know, just in the vein of why we're all here together, that we are all here together with a common goal, and that is to make our communities, uh, make our communities just a little bit better. We need, we need people to mute. Yeah. Here, people, if you could mute yourself, if everybody could mute yourself. Okay. All right. That's better, right? All right. Cool. All right. So, hi, Ursula. So, we're going to go on, and what we're going to do, we're going to start with our public gallery session. You know, and everybody is going to have um, three minutes to speak. And if you want to speak, you know, do raise your hand. It will make it a lot, you know, simpler. You know, you could raise your hand by using the reactions button on the um, on your um, on your website. Okay. All right. So, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask John to be the timekeeper, um, letting you know like your three minutes is about up. All right. Okay. So, um, without further ado, I see Miranda G, Miranda Goodwin. All right. And she has her hand up. Miranda Goodwin. Hi. Can you Hi. hear me? Hi. How are you? Yes. I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Can I share my screen briefly? Yes, yeah, sure. Great. Um, sorry, if you can give me one second. Um, okay. Great. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Awesome. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Miranda goodwin Rab. I am the Assistant Director of Engagement at the New York State Independent Redistricting Commission. I'm going to take just two minutes, um, go over some redistricting things that are happening. Um, we're seeking community input, and we want to hear from all New Yorkers. So that is why I'm here. Um, so really quickly for everyone, um, you know, redistricting every 10 years after the census is completed, um, every state has to you know, redraw the lines. Um, the redistricting commission that I am working for focuses on congressional, state senate, and state assembly lines. Um, other redistricting, you know, city council, et cetera, will happen after that. Um, so as many of you know, New York State will be losing one congressional seat. Um, and as I'm sure some of you also know, um, the population in New York has not only changed, but shifted. And that is what, you know, dictates our process. Um, so just a quick timeline. In 2014, voters approved a ballot proposal that established the commission. Um, there are 10 members on the commission. Four are appointed by um, Republican leaders and four are appointed by Democratic um, leaders from the legislature. The other two, um, each party gets to appoint um, an independent that kind of works with them. Um, so this past summer, before we received census data, which as I'm sure many of you know, our census data was delayed because of COVID. So before we received census data, we did a listening tour where we had um, different Zoom meetings throughout the state to hear from people about how they feel about their districts, what they think went wrong the last time, what they want to keep going forward, um, anything like that. Um, in September 15th, we released draft maps on our website, which um, I hope you will all check out. And where we are right now is that we're having um, 14 public hearings throughout the state. Um, last week, I was in Buffalo, Rochester. This week, we were in Binghamton and Syracuse. Um, and so we are making our way downstate um, now, and we will be in the Bronx on November 9th at Bronx Works. I will make sure to send um, your district managers all this information, and I hope we can um, share it. But that is why I'm here. So. 
Um, there are 10 commissioners, as I mentioned. Um, some of them are pictured here, and they will be the ones, you know, making these decisions um, in conjunction with line drawing experts. Um, and yeah, so the reason that I'm here is that, um, sorry, let me stop sharing. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. Um, the reason that I'm here is to solicit, to let you know that the, the commission is actively seeking public input. Um, we want to hear from you. We want to know what you like about, you know, the way your districts are drawn, what you don't like about the way your districts are drawn. Um, we want to know about the places that keep you and your community together, right? We have census data, but what we need you to help us do is fill in the dots, right? Um, tell us the places that, you know, whether it's stores, whether it's schools, whether it's places of worship, right? Um, community centers, things that really are the, the, the unofficial boundaries of your community, um, the neighbors that you have things in common with, the neighbors that you need to be in districts with to, you know, to collectively, um, you know, advocate for yourselves, right? And so that's why I'm here because, like I mentioned, on November 9th, we will be having a public hearing at um, Bronx Works in the gymnasium beginning at 3 p.m. and we'll be there as long as people um, you know, have to present. We want to hear from you. We want to know, um, you know, we also would really appreciate if you engage with our draft map because that's what we've put on the table. And if you hate them all, we want to know that. Nothing is too big, nothing is too small. Um, the most helpful is when you draw us a map. You can take a Google map and, you know, on your screenshot on your phone and draw it with your finger. You can do, um, you know, there's a lot of third party sites that allow you to draw your own map. And I'm sorry, I'm talking really fast and rambling, but. <laughs> If I can, if I can make one thing clear to all of you, we are really, really want to hear from you. Um, I can promise you the commission commissioners read your your input. Um, they take it seriously, and none of us know, um, you know, your community better than you. And so, it's really important to us that we hear from you. So, if I have just thirty seconds, I'd love to take any questions from anyone. Um, if anyone has any questions, are there any questions? Now, this redistricting, that's on the ballot for us when we go to vote, right? So there will be an amendment that is also, um, that has been put forth um, on the ballot that it's proposition one. Um, it would some want some of the changes, sorry, some of the changes proposed by that proposal um, would affect the commission's work. So some of it changes the deadline because when the commission was introduced in 2014, mm -hmm. primaries were in September. Right. So, you know, a January 20th deadline and then another February revision deadline didn't seem so far off. Um, but now that our primaries have been moved to June, um, that's a big reason for that um, ballot measure as well. It locks the number of state senators at 63 um, because that number has previously been in flux. And yeah. OK. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank well, thank you. you so much for having me. And um, I'll put my information and our website in the chat. And please um, tell your friends this is happening. It's once in a decade. Um, it's really important. I, I mean, I think it's important, obviously, um, but it is once every 10 years. And so we really, um, you know, we're actively seeking input from all New Yorkers. So thank you so much. OK, thank you. All right. Is there the next, like an airplane? I know. I'm airplane. hearing it's because somebody has their Okay, there's a couple of people with their um, microphones on. All right, so next I have Carlos, Carlos M. Torres. Hi, good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing tonight? Okay. Good. Um, my name is Carlos Torres. I'm the Crime Prevention Coordinator at the Broad District Attorney's Office. Thank you very much to CB12 for having me uh, present um, tonight. Just want to let everyone know on this call that on Saturday, November 6th, um, we'll be having a re-entry resource fair from 12 to 4 p.m. at Bronx Community Board 12. Thank you very much to Mr. Torres, uh, Ms. Green, and the folks over at CB12 for allowing us to uh, use their space. On that day, we'll be providing um, food, um, COVID testing, vaccination, COVID vaccination, but most important, um, resources to formerly incarcerated individuals, um, criminal justice involved individuals, but to the community members as well. Um, I put my information, my email, my telephone number in the chat box. I've have shared the flyer with um, Mr. Torres and Ms. Green as well. If anyone has any, um, inf if anyone has any questions, please feel free to to contact me either uh, by cell or by email, I'll make sure to return your call and respond to you uh, promptly. Once again, uh, Saturday, November 6th, Bronx Reentry, um, Bronx District Attorney's Reentry Resource Fair from 12 to 4 p.m. 
at Bronze Community Board 12. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Torres, for um, this wonderful partnership. I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing you all there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody has any questions? Okay, well, moving right along. Is there anybody else for the public gallery? Is there anyone else for the public gallery? Okay, then the public gallery is closed. And now, you know, I am going through the agenda. So now we go to the elected officials. And let me see, I'm just going in the order as I see it. <laughs> you know, I'm not really going by, um, yes, because I see Senator, Senator Connolly, I mean, Senator Biagi's office, that's Angela Connolly. Hi, good evening. Yes, this is Angela from Senator Biagi's office. How are okay. you all? Hi. Um, thank you for having me tonight. I just have um, a few um, announcements from our office. Um, as usual, we are providing our regular constituent services to everyone. Um, so I'll, I'll leave my contact information in the chat. Um, but uh, in terms of legislative updates, I did want to share that Senator Biagi's bill S 841A was signed into law. So that's a bill that reduces emissions of air pollutants from petroleum bulk storage facilities by actually requiring um, these facilities to paint the tanks white or like a beige cream color. And in doing so, in painting them that color, the um, it actually reduces the heat in the petroleum tanks and reduces the um, pollutants that are expelled from the tanks. Um, so that is good news for um, the good people of the Bronx and, and New York State. Um, and then another bill signed into law last week was um, Senator Biagi's bill S737A, which requires debt collectors to inform debtors that written communications are available in large print format. So for those of us who uh, you know wear glasses or have difficulty with, with small print, that's um, going to be very helpful. Um, and then uh, just because the, the questions on the ballot um, that will be on the ballot or that are on the ballot for anyone who has already voted or will be voting on uh, November 2nd, um, I just wanted to let you all know not to come down in, in any one way on the questions, but there are five questions that will be on the ballot. Um, and I am going to put a really helpful resource in the chat um, that is a nonpartisan site, but just gives you some more information about um, how to answer the questions um, and to, to give you a better idea of, of where you come down on, on those questions and, and how to vote. Um, so I will put that in the chat as well, like I said. And um, we, our office is sponsoring a uh, family and harvest celebration this weekend on the 30th from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. at Pelham Bay Park with Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez's office. And I know we'll be joined by Councilman Riley and his office and uh, City Council candidate Marjorie Velasquez as well. So there'll be games and candy, um, mask decorating for kids, face painting. Um, so I will put that, um, the link to that event with all of the, the details listed in the chat and you can RSVP there. Um, but that's that's it for me. I'm happy to answer any questions if anyone has any, um, but thank you for having me and have a great night. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Any questions for Senator Biag um, Biagi's office? Uh, good evening, I don't have a question. Okay. But I just wanted to tell, ask her how the senator is doing and just to give her uh, our regards. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ms. Dickerson. Um, yeah, if, if anyone doesn't know, uh, the senator unfortunately came down with a breakthrough case of COVID. Yeah. Um, so she is not, uh, you know, she's hanging in there, but but does have some symptoms and is is laying low and quarantining until she feels better, but is encouraging everyone to get vaccinated if you haven't been vaccinated and to get your boosters if you, you know, if you need those, um, because she, she did say that her symptoms, she knows her symptoms would be worse if she hadn't been fully vaccinated. So stay safe, everyone, and stay healthy. Thank you. Okay, and give her our regards for sure. All right. All right, so um, G Harmony from Senator Bailey's office. 
Hello, everyone. Uh, this is my first time joining uh, the meeting. Um, I joined the office recently, and I'll be working on communications as well as policy. And I'm based in the district office. And just to provide um, a brief overview, we do have a number of legislative updates. Um, starting with earlier this month, um, Senator, uh, Governor Hochul signed the overdose prevention bill package which included two bills um, sponsored by Senator Bailey, and that's S-1795, which formally created uh, a medication-assisted uh, tr assist assisted treatment program for uh, incarcerated individuals, as well as S-7228, which will allow more people to have their cases diverted away from the uh, criminal justice system. Um, later, uh, er after that, we had uh, two bills related, relating to juvenile justice system um, reform, and that's uh, S6498, which is uh, prohibits the use of certain restraints on children appearing before family court, as well as S7172, and that's relating to the execution of warrants in juvenile delinquency cases where fam family courts are closed, and that's just to sort of uh, prevent unnecessary attention for a detention for uh, juvenile uh, juveniles appearing before the court. And then finally, we have um, two bills relating to uh, labor reentry, and that's S two eight zero one A, and that's relating to work related labor protests not being considered a parole violation, as well as S two eight zero three, which relates to bona fide work not being considered a parole violation. So. Uh, overtime work as well as holidays or uh, work work related travel will be will no longer be considered a parole violation. Um, so those are our legislative updates and then we will uh, in terms of in district events we will have a number of Thanksgiving uh, events coming up uh, turkey giveaways and then followed by uh, Christmas events or holiday events uh, with toy giveaways. We'll have more details on that and we're just, just finalizing those details. Okay. Well, welcome. <laughs> welcome to Community Board 12's office. Welcome to Senator Bailey's office, <laughs> you know, um, and we hope to see you again. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. All right. So next is um, Kevin Riley's office. We have Cynthia. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Good evening. It's Cynthia Riley's office. In the chat, I'll put it again. Wait a minute. You're, wait a second. Um, everybody, you know, mute your mics. And Cynthia, your mic, it was coming in a little choppy. Sorry about that, it might be my Wi-Fi. Uh, is this better? Okay. Is this better? Yes, can everybody hear her? Yeah, she's good. Okay. All right, wonderful. So good evening, everyone. Um, I put the information in the chat and I will put it again. Our 940 East Gun Hill Road office is still currently closed for repairs and renovations, but we will be opening it by the end of the year and we'll invite everyone for a grand reopening. Um, really looking forward to that, honestly, <laughs> get back to the side of the district. We have two upcoming events uh, in addition to the one that Senator Biaggi's office mentioned. We have a uh, candy giveaway tomorrow from 3, p uh, 3 to p.m. to 5 p.m. at Agnes Haywood Playground. That's over on Barnes between uh, 215th and 216th. It'll be a small little event for the kids, uh, inviting them to dress up, get some candy, all of that. And then there will be Saturday's event with Biagi's office and ASC's office. And then on Sunday, our office, uh, along with Senator Bailey's office, will be putting on a performance in Co-op City on the Greenway uh, at 7 p.m. It's called a Haunted Pirates Adventure. It's a uh, performance show. Uh, we have some, uh, actually, a whole bunch of youth from the community like doing like a little stunt show. It's a really cute thing and uh, also inviting a local band to perform as well. We're really pushing people to uh, join our mailing list so that we can uh, update people and just really be able to keep in contact with one another. Uh, the link is bit.ly slash 12 mailing list uh, with a D, M, and L being capitalized, so the first letter of everything. 
I will put that in the chat again. Uh, should anyone have any issues, questions, comments, concerns, anything, they're always welcome to reach out to me. Our office phone number is 718-684-5509. And my email is cprisco at council.nyc.gov. Okay, thank you so much. Um, is there any, anybody have any questions? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. This is Johnny Goff. Or Hi. I would like, right, can you hear? Yes. Yes. Uh, um, well, Matt, oh, hi, Algeria, I'm board members. I would would like very much when the elected official or representatives speak or bring information, tell them to slow down some, you know? <laughs> I know they may be only have X amount of time, but we can barely get the, the telephone numbers and the information they're giving. They're talking just too fast. Okay. All right. So they did um, put the information in the chat. They did do that as well. And, you know, you can speak slower. <laughs> All right. I mean, even though we have, you know, we're on a time, but you can definitely speak a little slower. All right. I did. So <laughs> she did put her information in the chat. Okay. Thank you. Dear. Okay, cool. All right. Now, Ms. Donella Smith, Assemblyman Jeffrey Dinowitz's office. Good evening. Um, my name is Danella Smith. I work for Assembly Member Jeffrey Dinowitz. Um, we don't really have much announcements. However, our office is having a holiday food drive. Donations. We're taking non perishable donations at our office located at 3107 Kingsbridge Avenue. Um, Thanksgiving donations are before November 12th. And for the winter holidays, donations are for December 10th. Okay, is that it? <laughs> yes, I'll also put this information in the chat. Okay. All right. All right. Well, any questions? <laughs> All right, and we are moving right along. So are there any other elected officials that I did not uh, call? Yes, uh, Ms. Ms. Green. Uh, this is Nicholas from Congressman Bowman's office. Oh, hi. How are you, Nicholas? How are you doing, Ursula? No, um, it's Egeria. I'm the other Ursula. Oh, I got the other one. Right, right, right. I'm sorry. I got you. you guys sound so much alike. Yeah, I'm the other Ursula. <laughs> okay. Forgive yes. me for not speaking up sooner, everybody. Uh, I, I was driving, taking myself oh. home a late day today in the office. But um, I have been listening. If I'm going too fast, please let me know. Uh, first thing first, thank you everybody for having me here. Um, Ms. Conley, I hope Ms. Biagi is doing well. Uh, and thank you again to everybody else. With that said, we don't have too many updates. I want to let people know our office yesterday just hosted a, a webinar. Um, and it's like I'm at a loss for words right now. A nominee for service, service academy nominations. Wow. Service Academy nominations are still in effect. People can um, get no nominated through our office. Uh, they have to do go through an interview process. They can apply. They can apply online to do so. If anybody is interested, the deadline is approaching. Is uh, I believe is around November 11th. Got about a week and a half, almost two weeks left to do so. If anybody's interested, let me know. I'll get you connected to the personal office who works with that. After that, next week we're actually hosting a loan forgiveness webinar. Um, I think. I, I feel that that should apply to almost everyone and anyone. Uh, if you guys know people, let them know. Um, this, we're going to have the, uh, we're, we're partnering with the New York State Department. It's one of the SUNY ed education, I believe. They'll be oh, they'll be working with us to host the event. Um, I think a lot of good, useful information will be there. Like, fun fact, for those who don't know, if you uh, have a disability, uh, federally, you're allowed to, um, have your loans forgiven. You shouldn't have to pay your loans if you have a, a major disability. That's just one example of something you might learn if you attend. Um, but let people know to West Point, to the, um, ah, sorry, not to West Point, the grants and loans. And after that, yeah, we're gonna be coming up with a series of events next month as well as in December. I will keep you guys in the loop and send it to community boards. We're open nine to five, Monday through Fridays. Let people know um, we're, we're, we are accepting walk-ins you can make an appointment, just call the office. And yeah, I think that'll be all for today. Thank you guys again for having me and have a good night, everyone.
Okay. My apologies again, Missy Jerry. All right, that's okay. Thank you, Nicholas. Um, did anybody have any questions for Nicholas? Okay. Well, that ended the part with um, our elected officials. Now I see Alexis is here from our borough president's office. I didn't forget you, Alexis. <laughs> I didn't forget you. Um, I see Alexis is here. So Alexis. Hi, Ajiria. Hi. Good, good evening. Uh, good evening, Community Board 12. I'm happy to be here with you all. Uh, I miss seeing you guys in person, so I really can't wait for next year so we can all see each other. Um, so just a few updates. The usual uh, borough president's report was emailed and the website has been updated with the current uh, COVID information. So everyone should go check that out. If you have not voted early, please, please do so. Um, and I also wanted to mention the new member orientation was very successful. So thank you all for your participation. Uh, and to my new board members, the EEO form the, I'm sorry, the EEO policy form, excuse me, is very, very important. So please just read through the literature that I emailed you all and um, fill that out when you get a chance and send it back to me. Uh, thank you so much for the time and I will be here for the remainder of the meeting. Thank you. Okay, cool. The other thing I want to mention is that I see that the borough president's website, when you go to community boards, it has a lot more information on there than what it has had before because now you could actually click links into what the community board's handbook is. Correct. You could click links into um, seeing the demographics of the board, what the demographics, how it's made up. You could actually see who has been elected to the board or who has been put on the board for I think 220, that's the latest year that they do have, and they have for 219, but they have for 220. So yes, all our names are on there. <laughs> you know, it is definitely public information um, that the people could look at. They could, they even have the thing about, you know, about the budget, how the budget processes. So if you haven't been on the website lately, you know, I would recommend that you do go there and see the information that is there for community board members, okay? And it is links, you can, you know, definitely click the links to see just what it is, okay? Um, now I have next on the agenda, if that's it for questions as far as our elected officials are concerned. Okay, so I see, um, Anthony has his hand up. Yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. Happy Thursday, everybody. I don't have anything for the elected officials, but I just wanted to say something. Is that all right or am I out of order? Um, well, well, what is it that you have to say? All right. Uh I, I I'm I've I've missed a couple of uh of the uh, committee meetings and I'm just a little frustrated, right? You know, because I try to I try to put in a lot of work and do whatever I could do for the community board. Like, and, and I hear this and I hear that, but I'm not really uh, committed to what I hear. I, I just want to address something. Like, you know, I know that we're supposed to be having a vote for Ursula and uh, George today. Am I correct? Okay. Well, hold on. No, on no, that. no, it's not. It's not about. It's not. I'm not telling nobody nothing. I just no, want no, to no. Make a what I, what, what I'm going to say. What I'm going to say is we are going to discuss that, and it is on this agenda, but it's is is it's about number five on the agenda. Okay. But I I don't know if I'm going to be here because I have to uh, go back to work. I'm actually out in my car sneaking, and I apologize okay. for that. You know, I'm doing a little overtime, but, you know, they call that, you know what they call that. And I don't want to talk about that. But I just want, I just want to address something. Like, I'm so tired of people complaining about George and Ursula. They, they are the vessel of local, uh, of, of the community board. You understand? And uh -huh. they deal with so many peoples, man. Have some respect for them in their time, man. It, like, it's sometimes I speak to them and they still in the community board they still doing stuff like be mindful man like people so quick to say this and say that everybody's not going to be happy man i'm so tired i don't want to hear nobody complain about them man because they're doing a hell of a job and they deal with a lot of people like you talking about six feet i mean they probably dealing with like six million people man like please man have some respect for them man i'm, I'm tired of people trying to like judge them about anything man like okay. until you can do their job please man 
Watch right. your mouth, man, because I'm tired of hearing that, man. Watch your mouth. Have okay. some respect for them when you say their name. And that's all I got to say. I apologize if I offended anybody, but I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart, and I mean every word I say. Okay. Have some respect when you say their name, man. Thank right? you, and, Anthony. And I'm out of here, so uh, I apologize if I offended anybody, but I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Okay. Thank you, Anthony. All right. All right. I'm sorry if I offended anybody, but you know what? Eat that. You ain't offend. You ain't offend nobody, my brother. Well said, okay. my brother. Okay, cool. Be safe. Now go get go get that mula. All right. All I'm right. sorry. Forgive me. The next thing on the agenda is the community board chairperson's report. Now I think that the report, I don't have that. So either that is going to come later, um, and after that we'll go to the district manager's report. Okay. So George. Hi, I think um, Ursula may have shared that with everyone already. So I, you know, I've not been reading them. The only thing that I'll say, um, I think it was raised at yesterday's meeting. Um, next month's meeting, November, because um, our full board meeting runs into the holiday, we move our meeting one week up. So I believe that falls on November 18th. Just a reminder, we'll create the WebEx link and we'll send it to everybody um next week the first week of uh, november um but just that's an fyi for everybody we'll not be meeting obviously during thanksgiving we'll meet the, the thursday before that's the only reminder okay all right the next thing is the approval of the board minutes julia i think there's a a, a representative from the department of sanitation that would like to speak um yes i do have her on this list I mean, if you have to really go, I have you on the list. <laughs> All right, wait a minute, you're, you're muted. Okay, yeah, we still can't hear you. Can't hear you, Hillary. Hi, sorry. Um, I was speaking through my phone. <laughs> um, yeah, I just have something else at 8 p.m. So if it's possible oh, okay. for me to go prior to 8 p.m., then that would be great. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to move you up the approval of the minutes and a financial report. I'll hold that until after. So you can make your presentation now. Wonderful. Thank you. So everyone can hear me all right? Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. I'll go ahead and share my screen. This shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. Okay, cool. <laughs> Sorry to get everyone off track. Um, all right, can you see this okay? Yes. Yeah. Um, make compost, not trash. <laughs> make compost, not trash. That's what I'm here to talk about. Um, brief overview of some of the compost programs about why you should compost and then the options available to y'all right now. Um, just because there's been a little bit of confusion when it was stopped over COVID. So we're just going around all the boards trying to clear that up and let people know, you know, what your taxes are making available for you. So you may as well participate. Um, why compost? Uh, better for the neighborhood. It's a third of your trash. So you may as well turn it into something valuable, uh, like fertilizer or energy rather than just throw it in a landfill. Um, also better for rat mitigation. I know that's been a big point uh, for other community boards in the Bronx that I've spoken to. So it's, it's endorsed by the Department of Health to help with that. Um, also, if you're interested in larger environmental issues, it's a, a great way to help out the climate change cause as well. Um, a little bit about DSNY's program, it's rolling out to community board districts based on interest, um, meaning we're asking residents to sign up if they're interested so that we can make our routes more efficient um, and better estimate the tonnage that would be picked up. Right now, we've just rolled out to Brooklyn and um, there is some interest in community board 12, but we're trying to boost that so we can be able to route a truck out there um, and so, yes, I'm here to let you know that prior to this, uh, prior to COVID, it was automatic for low rise buildings. That every address that is interested needs to sign up um, if that's something that you'd like to do. Resumed in October. Um, like I said, rolling out district by district, trying people in my building to sign up. Um, I'll just, let me pull up that chat in a bit. We can do some brief questions after. Um, so you can sign up if you're in a building that has under nine units. If you sign up, it'll automatically make you eligible. If you're in a larger apartment building, you would need either a property manager 
for your superintendent to sign up is because typically the tenants don't manage the waste. Um, I know sometimes it's tough to convince a landlord to do that. Um, and we have customer service representatives, or if you, the tenants, sign up, we, DSNY, will reach out to them for you. Um, that's what I did because I was afraid to talk to my landlord about it because she hates rats. So I had DSNY, I had a colleague of my caller. <laughs> so it's very acceptable. <laughs> All right, here's the kind of things that can go in it. Um, a lot of food scrap drop off sites, you can't put meat and bones in it, but these you can because we've got some heavy duty. Uh, compost sites out in, uh, in Brooklyn, Staten Island, and Queens. Oh, here's the thing about building manager. If you're in a large building, you can sign up. If you're in a small building, you can sign up. Also, I know you're all probably very involved in the community. If you're involved in nonprofits, community gardens, uh, houses of worship, those can all sign up also to receive curbside composting. That's what this says. Service details, that's what the bin looks like. Um, it latches shut, it's a thick plastic. It's thicker than those thin plastic bags that you typically put your trash out in the curb. Um, they're rodent proof, unless you've got some radioactive rodents up there that I haven't heard about. Um, so they're, they're great for that rat mitigation program as well. Um, one update that I also wanna share that's different than prior to COVID is before you couldn't put plastic bags in the bin. Now we have a machine that can separate plastic bags. So not only can you line it, uh, but if there are concerns about smell, you can drop fully tied plastic bags of waste in there also, uh, which larger buildings such as in uh, Bronx 8 are gonna be doing. How can I compost if it's not there yet? It's not in the Bronx yet. It's rolling out to one district in December, hopefully more in 2022. Uh, but for the time being, there are food scrap drop off sites all over the city. And that's another thing I want to talk to you all about. There is only one food scrap drop off site in Bronx 12 right now. And it would be great, you know, while we wait for the city to roll out curbside um, to get more food scrap drop off sites. And you can host those if you're part of a nonprofit. Um, so the community board could host one if you're part of a church, uh, a mosque, a synagogue, um, if you work with a garden, if you work with, you know, a, a school. Um, any of those parks associations, you can sign up to host one of these drop off sites uh, for people to just come by for however long you want to keep it open, drop off their waste and the city will work with you to get that picked up. Great way, again, to keep some of that food out of the trash and put it back into our parks. And there's a map online where you can see all the locations, even if there's not one close to where you live, there might be one close to where you work. Um, that's what I do. I commute with it. I take it down to Bowling Green. It's disgusting, but uh, I do. Um, and it's, it's definitely doable. All right. And then um, that's that's the brief spiel. I have one other brief update. Um, okay. Another program that's rolling out as part of this curbside composting program is fall leaf collection. Um, I believe I reached out, the, or the community board was contacted by our Bureau of Public Affairs um, we're giving away free leaf bags to help people participate. So if you're part of a community group that wants to host uh, leaf bag distribution, I'll put my email in the chat. I'm working with a couple libraries in Bronx 12 to also host sites um, to give away those leaf bags for people who want to participate. And I'll put another link about that online as well. Um, all right, so now I'm only looking at the chat, looking at questions. Does anyone want to? shout them out or should i just go through these i mean um i think is luke okay uh this is carla borsati from community board 12. i have a quick question sure. so i signed up for curbside compost pickup and was told that we had to recruit more members from the community uh, is there any support for that, like flyers? I'll do flyering, but I don't have any materials. Can can you help with that? Yes, absolutely. We have a website called makecompost.com, and there was, there's a link on there where you can print your own flyers. Um, also, if you don't have a printer, you, we, can, we can mail some to you. Um, so you can do your own canvassing if you'd like. Also, if you're in any community groups that you want a rep from DSNY to show up and we can even give away free compost. Um, we're happy to do that to try to get more community mobilization. Hi. Okay, so make, make compost.com, you said. 
correct? Yeah, just look up Make Compost NYC, and it should be an orange page um, with some resources there with uh, materials that you can distribute. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, this is Luke. I was wondering, um, is there a threshold of signatures that you need in a particular building or in a particular community board that would trigger curbside? You know, how many signatures are should we be trying to get to get this in effect? And I also uh, put a, sure. a question in the chat. Yes, sure. I'll, I'll be sure to address both of them. Um, in terms of the threshold, I wish that I could say there's, you know, if you hit this exact number in any board, we will bring you composting. Um, but it's different for every community board, depending on uh, the geography, depending on the housing density. For example, you know, one community board in Brooklyn is going to look really different than a community board in Manhattan, which is going to look different from yours. Um, so it's dependent on the number of signups, as well as, you know, the, the number of addresses. Um, typically, what we've been telling people is it's good to have about 10% of the population sign up, um, which is a tough, a tough threshold to meet. But we're, we're in the community. We've got boots on the ground trying to get to as many people as possible and ad address their concerns. Um, one of which you brought up tonight was that it would attract rats. We, we get that question all the time. What's interesting about this program is that it's not creating any more waste that wasn't already there. It's actually just moving it from those thin plastic bags and putting it into a thicker, latchable container. Um, so if anything, those rats should leave the thin plastic bags alone since there's nothing good in there and they will not be able to access what they would normally go for in these bins, um, in, the, in the bins. And you would roll out these bins directly to the curb. Um, the thing that attracts rats the, the most if there is user error with the bins is if people don't close them. If you leave it open after you use it and it's just a free for all, like any bucket of trash that's open, it might have some issues. Um, so the buildings that we've worked with, especially the larger buildings, when we give them a bin, we also give them a sign that says, Please God close the bin or it'll be a rat party happening here. Um, but that's any that's any trash room. Lock it up, bag it up, tie it up, and, and close it up. Thanks. Sure. If uh, if anybody asks y'all questions about it, because it's the most common one, uh, please feel free to send them my way. Um, I'll put my email in the chat. I know it can be tough to to talk about that kind of thing by yourself. Um, but I assure you that we've talked with the Depart Department of Health and we don't want to bring any rats to people's neighborhoods. I assure you that's not my goal. <laughs> okay, are there any more questions? So thank you so much, Ms. Bosch. All right, thank you for being here and giving us that information. All right, any more questions? Uh, Eugenia, I do have a question, um, uh -huh. not pertaining to the current subject, but you did say that, um, Ursula White would have sent out the, the district manager's report. Um, I mean, I've looked at all my emails. I don't see it. So either she can tell us when it was sent or if she hasn't sent it, can she please send it out? Your last one I'm seeing is from September. Ursula? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for it now. Okay. All right. Okay, so, and we're gonna move on. I know that right now we don't have the minutes from the last meeting, so we'll just backtrack and we'll have to catch up with that on our next board meeting. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, cool. All right, so what we're gonna go now is the financial report. Good evening. Hi, good evening. I know, y'all can see me. Wow. Yes, we can see you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm doing a lot better from the hospital, so uh, I figured I could uh, show my face. We are glad um, to see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate it. A lot of hard work. Yeah, thank um, you. <laughs> quick question. I mean, a quick thing to say. I have not received a lot of Sunshine Fund money. So we are still at 10, 10, 14. 
As you know, it's $35. Please send it to the community board office, drop it off by check or money order or whatever. Make sure you call ahead of time and see if Ursula or someone is in the office to receive it. Thank you very much. I would appreciate it thoroughly. And I mean, it, it's, it comes in handy as like I just said, I was in the hospital for almost three months. So, I mean, it, it comes in handy. I think the last thing that we did, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, what we sent out to Carmen when um, that was the last thing I sent out. And as a matter of fact, it's pretty hysterical because being that I'm the person that sends everything out, I didn't send myself anything. So we still have, <laughs> <laughs> we still have the same amount of money. Okay, so please, everybody, I would appreciate well, it. Thank you. Welcome Pauline, back, Mr. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. God is good. Pauline, who do you want the check made out to? The Sunshine Fund. Sunshine Fund. Thank you. Yes. And put that on. You can put that on the envelope as well. Attention Sunshine Fund. And that way nobody has to open the envelope except for the people that's supposed to open the envelope. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for the question. There anything else right now? Okay, so we'll go on to the next item, which is a vote on committee recommendations. And first I have up is the Economic Development and Business Committee. Here. Okay. Um, Jerry, look what, uh, would you read what's in the um, chat for, from me? Okay. I need an answer on that. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, as you know, we had our meeting last Thursday. And I, from the committee, we only have two establishments that we would like to recommend to the board to approve for their licenses. One is for um, front page restaurant which is a, a new license. And they're located at 4635 White Plains Road. And it's gonna be a, a Caribbean type restaurant. And the other one is for renewal of the Avenue. And the Avenue is located at 4352 Katona Avenue. And we had no problems with them, no, um, no issues with the New York City uh, Police Department. So I'm recommending this to the board that we approve these licenses. One is for new and one is for renewal. And that's my report. For Judith? Yes. <laughs> All right, so I guess what we'll do is take a vote. That's the correct thing. I'm sorry? That's correct. Okay, cool. So we got to have a motion to take a vote. Now, I understood that you are accepting the, min the presentation. It's only one vote that has to be taken. Is that correct? This time I'm allowing for one vote for one new and one renewal. I'm not gonna um, drag it out like I did the last last month. I think last month oh. we got so many of them that I didn't want any mistakes, but this month is very simple. It's just two, two establishments that we're talking about. Uh, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Okay. We only have to take one vote because by approving the committee's report, Yes. It means that we agree with what they said. So we we, yes. we approve it. It's it, the letter gets written. Okay. All right. So um, go ahead and okay. call the call the votes. Did we get a motion first? Make oh, a motion, yes. Anthony Reed. Yes, Anthony made a motion. Second. Second. Okay. Are we ready? Are we all in favor? Aye. Okay, uh, I'll start calling the roll. 
Okay. And for your information, we do have a, a quorum for this evening. Okay. Okay. Um, Judith Benitez, aye. Egeria Bennett, abstain. Sydney Blair, abstain. Denise Bond, aye. Ivan Boras. Aye. Paula Bosati. Aye. Michelle Broomfield. Michelle Broomfield. Michelle, can you unmute yourself? Yes. You saying I? Hello? Yes. Okay, thank you. Darlene Allen. Abstain. Victor Brown. Nay. Deacon Brown is excused. Uh, Novick Ryan. Norbert Bryan. Norbert Bryan. Norbert is away, and I think he was supposed to be trying to call in by telephone. Okay, thank you, John. Um, Michael Burke. Is he excused or is he not present? What is the story with him? Yes, he's excused. Katie Samble. Aye. I'm sorry, Sadie Campbell. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sadie. That's okay. I... Thank you. Joan Claude. Aye. Beatrice Coronel. Aye. Colleen Dickinson. Aye. Jason Dubois. Jason. Aye. Kevin Eichelberger. Abstain. Sorry? Abstain. Thank you. Um, Alfredo Figueroa. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Hannah Gatali. Is Hannah here? Hannah Gapali. Barbara Gibson. Abstain. Johnny Goff. Abstain. Lisa Hayes. Lisa Hayes wrote in the chat. She accepts and she cannot unmute. Oh, okay. Th uh, thanks, uh, John. Okay. Robert Hall is excused. John? Aye. James Theodore, Theodore James? Aye. Keisha Lago Martin? Aye. Lassa Off? Off a lice. Are you here? Paul Anzano. Aye. Jaren Manzet. Jaren, are you here? Lucille Martin. Lucille Martin. <laughs> Shanika War. Aye. Clinton Mike. Clinton. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Gotcha. Gotcha, Clinton. Carmen Ortiz. Aye. Thanks, Carmen. 
Let me read. Thank you. Dr. Dina Robbins. Abstain. Jessica Samboy. Jessica Samboy. Luisa Sanchez. Luisa Sanchez. Hmm? Luisa Sanchez. Harry Singh. Aye. Paul Stricker. Aye. Luke Sabados. Aye. Deborah Torado. Deborah Torado. Esther Yemen. Abstain. The eyes have it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And the next one is the executive. Um, the executive committee had a meeting and it was um, discussed the uh, merit raises for support staff of the community board. And it they took a vote and they had approved the um, merit raise. So it was approved. So I guess it will go to the board now so that the board can now vote. I'll move. Okay. Okay. That's a motion. That's one. That's two. All right. So we make a motion to vote on accepting the executive committee's report. That's correct. Okay. Are we going to take a vote? We have to take a roll call. Yes. Yeah, I okay. know. I'm yes. getting ready to do it. <laughs> I might be a little bit quick. Uh, <laughs> Judith Benitez. Aye. Sydney Blair. Sydney Blair. Sydney Blair, are you with us? Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, are you voting? Oh, so do I. Okay, thank you. Can we expedite it and just find out if everyone wants to vote? Aye. Aye. Denise Bond. Aye. Ivan Boris. Aye. Paula Basadi. Aye. Michelle Brumfield. Aye. Aileen Allen. Is there anything in the chat? I don't see anything in the chat. Is she still with us? Victor Brown? Aye. Thank you, Victor. Sadie Campbell? Aye. Joan Claude? Aye. Beatrice Cornell. Aye. Colleen Dickerson. Aye. Isan Dubois. Aye. Evan Eichelberg. Aye. Alfredo Figueroa. Aye. Anna Gapoli, or Gapoli, is she here with us? Barbara Gibson? Aye. Johnny Goss? Aye. Lisa Hayes? Okay, I got you, I got you Lisa. Um, John Isaac. Aye. 
Theodore James. Aye. Peter. Aye. Afalas. Afalas. Ponzano. Ponzano. Is Paul still on, online? Can someone see him? Did you call my name? Yeah. You... I vote aye. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Jaron Manzet. Lucille Martin. Shanika Moore. Shanika. Sorry, I was trying to unmute. I. Thank you. Clinton, Mike. Aye. Carmen Ortiz. Aye. Aye. Anthony Reed. Aye, 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 aye. I got you, <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Dina Robbins. Aye. Jessica Samboy. Luisa Sanchez. <laughs> Harry Singh. Aye. Paul Stricker. Aye. Luke Salados, I see your your information. Thank you. You posted the affirmative. Deborah Torado. Esther Yemen. Aye. Thank you. The eyes have it. The, Okay. All right. All right. So we go on to our next item on the agenda. Now there's some things on this agenda that we, I don't know if we can do, like there is an update on Furman village presentation. I'm I don't sorry, know. I'm sorry. Uh, actually we had the land use committee in conjunction with the housing committee. Okay. And and right now, the the committees are leaning towards not approving it. Okay. Uh, so, well, we're gonna they're going through their uh, ninety day uh, land use uh, procedure. Okay. And one, we have to hold a public hearing on it, and okay. after the public hearing, that's when we'll take the vote on this. Okay. All right, so that's what the situation is in regards, in regards to Furman Village. Um, for the new business, uh, is there any questions? Anybody uh, has any questions? Nigeria. Uh huh. Uh, what's your vote on the um, raise? Are oh, I abstain. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, as far as the new business is concerned, um, we have executive officer election results, and that sounds like that will go to Mr. Mikey. <laughs> yes. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. So, um, hope everyone is well. Okay, well. Um, I'm going to start today. Okay, so if everybody can make sure to no mute your mics. No. You have to well, mute your mic. Victor. Victor. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. So the election was held. Um most of the well all all all, all of the candidates were running unopposed. And the results of the election was 100% uh, for the candidates that were running. Um, I just have to say one thing, though. I was going through the, listening to the roll call. And in order for your vote to count, you needed to be present at the meeting at the meeting this evening. So I have uh, four people. Well, yeah, four people, two people 
that are not here, that are not present for the meeting. Two people out of uh, 29 votes total. So um, with that said, the uh, winners of the election for chair, Dr. Burke, uh, first vice chair, Jerry Bennett, second vice chair, John Isaac, corresponding secretary, Judith Benitez, Reporting Secretary Carla Bassati, and Treasurer Tolene Dickinson. Congratulations to all. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. So the other thing that's on this, um, a cursory review of district needs statement. Do you know what that would be, George? <laughs> Yes. Um, so every year we submit a list uh, to the um, um, to the city department of city planning for um, what to prioritize. Well, to state our district needs, the, the things that we want in the community, and then to prioritize them, ranking them one through whatever it is. Um, I, I know that Dr. Burke was working on this with us. Um, I don't have the list. Okay. The submission is supposed to be for tomorrow, um, so we're a little bit behind. Um, but you know, we can bring this up for a vote again next month at our uh, at our uh, November eighteenth meeting. All right. Okay. No, does anybody have any questions? Are there? Um, how do we get involved in that process? I guess it's probably too late for this year, but. You know, for next year, which committee would that be? It's all of them. I mean, what it, my understanding of what Dr. Burke has tried to do with all the chairs of the committees is sort of, you know, come up with a list. I know um, the non for profit committee also was kind of doing some of that work with the survey that they had out in the community. Um, and th that's basically, I mean, anybody can make a submission. Um, you can look at what our past submission and submissions are. I mean, it's again, it's 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 already um, on our website. I don't know if it's on our website, but it's on the website for the Department of City Planning. Um, but again, anybody and everybody, generally speaking, Luke, the, the way we're supposed to do it um, is we have district budget uh, district budget consultations that are supposed to start in either april may or june usually we go towards june we go over stuff and then you know we have a conversation and we try to sort of narrow down the list that's the way it's I'm supposed to work ideally um if i recall properly um we just had a meeting although the uh, unfortunately it, it was an, a daytime meeting uh, with the parks department uh, where we did a walkthrough with shoelace park so we could sort of prioritize and the Bronx River Alliance sort of prioritize what our request for the parks department was going to be. But again, this is something that all the all the respective committees that we have are working on. We don't necessarily have one committee working on an overall submission package. Okay. Are there any other questions regarding the district needs? All right. So the other thing on here was community board 12 newsletter. Is there anybody here uh, that was a part of the newsletter? So, so I can share a little bit about that. Tiffany sure. and I um, have drafted a newsletter. We aren't in our final stages yet. Um, okay. But the idea is to give uh, members of the community an idea of who we are and what we do mm -hmm. and the conversations that we're having. Okay. Um, and also to share with them what I'm, you know, when we meet, where we meet uh, to get them more actively engaged. So that's the goal. And we do have a draft that we share with Dr. Burke, but we, we, I didn't love it. And so Sydney and I haven't had a chance to revisit it yet, but it is in progress. We do have a draft. Okay. So Sydney, do you want to share anything about the newsletter? Yeah, I did. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, so right now, I will admit that uh, I haven't gotten around to looking at it. Me and Keisha, 
we split up the last year, um, looked over the minutes. Really, this newsletter should be a more um, palatable way to let the community know what we're doing. And as Keisha said, what we're talking about. Um, we're also looking to possibly, you know, incorporate the survey that um, Beatrice is working on circulating throughout the community. And even uh, as we go um, like further into it, we could even like narrow down the excessive amount of emails being sent from the community board into those newsletters, make it like a one-stop shop essentially. We haven't gotten around to um, meeting about it because I've been a bit busy with midterms, but we're gonna get to it soon. Now, would the board members, you know, would we, you know, submit things to you or is this just information that, you know, that you would collect as far as things happening in the community and all? So most, most of the information that's in our draft newsletter has come from, um, you know, George, George's report, um, Dr. Burke's report. So it's, it's stuff that we've discussed, decisions that we've made. Um, and all of it is public, you know, so we really, we really just want the community to know, like, that their concerns are also ours and we're having these conversations. They just don't know because they're not actively engaged. Um, so, so anything in the newsletter wouldn't be a surprise to any of us because they're things that we're actively discussing, voting on, um, having conversations with, you know, the captain of the 47th precinct about all those types of things. Okay, I see Beatrice. I'm sorry. Um, Madam President, I mean, um, <laughs> Madam Vice President. Uh, comment on the newsletter. Uh-huh. Yes. Well, if we, were, if we were physically at our board meeting yeah. and the community was there, there would be a lot of things from the community that they would, they would from the board, based on George's or information's or the chair or the vault president, they would be aware of all of that. Having said that, things that I, I'm suggesting that I also feel that the newsletter should carry, a lot of people in the community don't even know the kinds of committee that we have on, in, on the board. For instance, when it comes down to education, uh, you know, there's so many things that's going on in the school or in, in the process, you know, information from the superintendent or having somebody come from that area to talk about what's going on in our school, we would never know. Okay. So to have a newsletter going out to the public, you know, or, or, you know, newsletter for a monthly or whatever time it comes out, I think it should also have information concerning the kind of board, I mean, committee we have and the kind of service that is rendered through these committee for the community. Okay. All right. So I'll take Beatrice, then Shaniqua, then Sydney. I just want to thank you, ladies, Keisha and Sydney. That is an amazing idea. I think that the more information we're able to circulate, the more of a unified community we will be. And thank you for mentioning that you're going to um, aim to at the survey there. That would be amazing. We can definitely meet up on that. Thank you all. All right. Shaniqua? Yeah, absolutely. Echoing Beatrice's sentiment. I think it's amazing to have um, uh, some mass communication sent out talking about what we do as a, as a board. Um, and uh, Mrs. Goff took my, one of the things I was going to mention is the committees, like making sure we get information out on the work that we're doing. A lot of times it's just people in the community don't know what's happening. Um, so that's a great way to engage and connect with the community. I wonder if there, I have um, an idea, which I thought about, this may be more for like the economic committee, but I thought of this idea before, a lot of businesses in our, our district are looking for ways to advertise. Um, that may be a way for us to sort of raise funds um, by allowing businesses and the community to pay for like a small spot in a newsletter um, and to potentially raise money, if that's something that's allowed. Um, so 
I know there are businesses throughout like White Plains Road, um, Boston Road, right? They're looking for ways to get the word out um, about the things that they're doing about their business. That may be a way for us to utilize that newsletter um, to also bring some more funds into the board. So just an idea. Happy to talk. Okay. okay. Um, Sydney and then Luke, I see that you wanted to make a comment. So after Sydney. I was just going to add on um, and um, address Mrs. Goff's point. Um, we um, not only did we use the chairman's report, um, George's report, we also used committee minutes. We went through uh, every committee meeting minute that we could find that between um, last September and uh, this past June. And that is included in our draft as well. So, you know, we're going to be continuously mentioning the committees, mentioning what they're doing, mentioning the conversations that they're having. Okay. All right, Luke. Thanks so much. Uh, so obviously I'm a new member and, and new to this. Um, I do have some experience. I used to work for a different community board and I can say just from my experience with working with community boards that Bronx Community 412 is like one of the most transparent. It's amazing, you know. Uh, there's a wealth of knowledge and information that subscribing to the current mailing list provides. And I do uh, fully support, you know, efforts to focus, you know, some of these court, uh, communications. I do want to make sure also that uh, some of that information that is being sent out by the board office isn't lost. Um, you know, there are a lot of great uh rules of the city of new york hearings that are kind of technical but really interesting and can be really impactful that um any kind of newsletter uh i hope that we can include you know a lot of the information that's uh currently being sent out so thanks so much and that's all my comments okay. mr ted james you have to unmute yourself Sorry. Um, yeah, just a question on the newsletter. Um, I was wondering what was the uh, frequency that we're looking at, whether it would be monthly or quarterly or yeah, semi-annually. And the second thing would be, um, um, I just want to, again, thank the, the ladies and congratulate them for the work that they're doing. But at the same time, if, if it's going to be um, depending on the frequency, I would like to suggest that they built the the newsletter with more like a template so that this the um you know they would have the sections and they just keep updating them maybe like on a whatever it is quarterly or monthly so that there'll always be space for new information and that information gets refreshed on a periodic basis um i'll answer to that Keisha, if that's okay um so yeah uh we're in right now looking for it to be on a monthly basis um we're probably gonna really do what you just suggested ted which is um finding figuring out our template our final template and just you know inputting the information as it comes and, and you know maybe we could even move to a shorter um circulation time maybe we could even do it bi-weekly or even weekly, because, you know, committees meet every week, different, you know, we have different emails going out, um, different things going on in the community every week. And if we could bring it down to there, like on a weekly basis, that'd be great. But at the current moment, we're looking to do it on a monthly basis. Okay. All right. Anything else on the newsletters? So the only thing I have left here is the good and welfare. And again, I'm not sure if there's anybody that could speak on what the good and welfare was about. Okay. Okay. Well, is there anything else that anybody has to say or? So. Yes, I do. Yeah, who? Who's that? Well, um, yes. yeah, let me get my picture going. <laughs> OK. 
Okay. I just wanted to say that I got an email. I don't know if everybody's aware of it, that Montefiore has reached a long-term agreement with United Healthcare effective December 1st. That's been a year, at least a year they've, uh, they hadn't reached an agreement. Now they have as of December 1st. Okay. I just wanted to let everybody know about that because that did come up. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yes, Anthony. Hey, family, I'm back. I, I, I just want to really, really uh, thank yes. Ursula and, and George for the hard work that they do. And I'm so grateful that, you know, we start to appreciate them and, and do the right thing for them. Because I could imagine how many personalities they deal with, man. God bless you guys, man. Thank you so much for being a part of my life. You have helped me from going crazy. Thank you. <laughs> I love y'all. All right. Okay. Is there Thank anything you. else? Uh, Eugenio, I'm just yes. assuming that the um, the results from the meeting last night didn't make it onto the agenda for tonight. The results from last night's meeting what was uh, there was a the, the discussion that we had last night oh yeah no no it didn't make it onto this agenda okay yes george <laughs> i was i was gonna say in regards to that um i don't know if tom sent it or shared with everybody G governor hokel signed two pieces of legislation recently regarding agendas, uh, I think it was a transparency bill. Um, uh, one was involving the MTA and posting their documents, and then the other one was about public forums like ours, we're a public board, um, giving 24 hours, uh, not notice for the meeting, the notice is already established uh, 72 hours, but agendas have to be out. Um, I think we, I, I hope we shared it, I think we sent it out to everybody, um, if Tom did not share it. So I, if we didn't share it, I'll make sure that it goes out tomorrow. Okay. Um, Alfredo. Uh, good evening, everybody, friends, family. Hope everybody's well. I just want to take this time to thank George and Ursula for their hard work. I've known them for a very long time. Um, anyways, um, thank you for your time. Thank you for what you do. Um, I'll keep my comments to myself. Um, I appreciate you guys. I mean, you guys do, I mean, you know, what you guys do on a day to day basis, it's, it's, it's crazy. But you guys do it, you know, you don't complain, you always have a smile on your face. And, you know, sky's the limit for you guys. If it was up to me, I'll give you guys a million dollars each. You know what I mean? But, you know, I can't do that. But just know that, you know, Whatever you guys need, we're here for you guys, and we appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate Ursula. You guys always there. Y'all always pick up phone calls. You know, y'all always give good advice. And, you know, just God bless you guys and continue doing what y'all do. Okay. All right. So, thank you. So is there anything else? Anything? Anybody? Yes, well, good and welfare. I just want to say anybody who's had birthdays this month or anniversaries this month. Jerry, I just want to share with uh, with our members again, uh -huh. the new ones, if you're able to join the not-for-profit committee, please do. We're still at 315 surveys completed. There's not nearly enough. Okay. If every member on this board were able to do 10, we would be far more advanced. So I really urge you all, please help out. We're here to help each other. We're here volunteering. We're here giving a lot of our time. Yeah. I need assistance and backup. So I'm urging you all to please volunteer, show up to the ad hoc not-for-profit committee meetings. Thank you. Okay, Igeria, I wanna remind the children, the parents and the kids that Carl Hasty, the speaker of the state of New York, our assemblyman, and Safer, my organization, will be having a Halloween party on Saturday at 3471 Fenton, right in front of the nursery school in the park from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Costume, preferably, would like to be worn by the children. Have lots of fun. We have lots of food. We have lots of games. And, of course, 
we have lots of, lots of lots of safety in reference to the CV19. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, Clinton. I, I just have one little thing to say as chair of the uh, nominating committee. Um, be on the board. I just would like to see everybody. I would like to see everybody become more active. Um, we have 44 board members. We should have 44 votes, but you know that's behind us now. But I just want to say that we had 29 out of 44, which is decent. But you know, if we're going to be on the board, we we have to do our work, and that's that's. But thank you for all those that participate. Okay. And I'd like to acknowledge Mr. DeCastro, who's here on this meeting too. <laughs> Hi, Mr. DeCastro. How are you? Glad to see you. <laughs> and I'm glad that the YMCA is kicking and running. <laughs> the YMCA is kicking and running. You know, so congratulations membership. on that. Get a membership. That's right. Membership. <laughs> now you got to get membership. That's right. Okay. So if there's anything else, I'm well, going to ask. Yes. I'm oh, sorry. One last question. Um, I was trying to make it to the traffic and transportation committee meeting, but uh, Hello. Weston, hi, can you hear me? Yes. I was trying to make it to the traffic and transportation committee meeting. Barbara Gibson. Month. Did I miss that or? Wait, 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 Barbara, hold on. Can you okay, hear me? Go ahead, look. Yes, they, Barbara. We didn't have one. Oh, we didn't. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yes, Barbara. Barbara Gibson. Nigeria. Hmm? This is Al Castro. Oh, yes. First, I'd like to t let you know that over 800 people have signed up for the Y. Oh, wow, that's great. And that's I want to thank all of you for serving the community board. <laughs> I've been around there for a long time. Okay. And I am impressed, especially with the younger people, with their ideas to, to solve some of the problems. Yeah. I really appreciate everything that you all are doing. You know, wow. I've been in this community for 56 years, and I've been around the community board just as long. So I appreciate everything that you all are doing. Thank you so much, because I always say what you do for this community, you do for yourselves. Thank right. you very much, and good night. Okay, thank you. Ms. Gibson? Ms. Gibson? Okay. All right. So on one that... last thing I wanted to add, um, is the, um <laughs> just following up on what Clinton said, um, um, because our election was virtual, and I was just wondering if there was anyone who had any type of technical uh, issues in terms of um, completing the vote, and if so, I mean, you might want to contact Clinton because. Um, yes, it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Clinton, we might have some people who were not able to vote because of um, technical issues. Okay, so we may take that up. You know, maybe you can um, speak with Clinton after this, you know, in preparation for any future things that has to happen, you know, technically. Ho All right. Hopefully we won't have to vote like this anymore. Right, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Yeah. All right. All right. Well, on that note, um, I know I've got to go. <laughs> um, so I, I just want to say if there's anything else. Have safe travels, Miss Nigeria. Be safe. I know. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I am driving like. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So. Hi, um, Gibson. Like to say something. Yes, ma'am. I like to thank George and Ursula as well. Okay. They've listened to my situations throughout the time that I've been on the board. Yeah. And they they remain as successful as they have toward us. And I thank them both very much. Cool. Thank, thank you, you. Miss Gibson. All right. So on that, I'm gonna ask for a motion. 
to close. Sorry, can I just say something really quickly? I'm so sorry. This is yes. Alex from the Bronx DA's office. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Hello. I'm sorry. Hi. I'm so sorry that I was at community board one. Okay. And it's still going, so I'm going back and forth. So I just wanted to give a quick update that our office will be hosting a re-entry fair. Okay. It will be Saturday, November 6th, between the hours of 12 and 4, and it's going to be actually at Community Board 12. Oh, okay. Cool. And also, um, if anyone knows of a house of worship that is interested in having our DA host a gun buyback event, please feel free to contact me. We're looking to have this gun buyback event with, um, within the confines of the 4-7. And the date that we're potentially looking at is December 18th, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So if anyone here knows a house of worship that is interested in having us to host this event, to see if we can at least get um, a few of firearms off the streets to decrease the gun violence, I will highly appreciate that. My information is in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, um, Marilix. All right. And I want to thank John for being the backup for me, <laughs> just in case I had to run. But um, so, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so um, right now I'm looking for a motion to close the meeting. Motion to Okay. Second. Okay. So on that note, we're going to close this meeting and I bid you all a good night and Amazing. be safe. <laughs> be safe. Be blessed. <laughs> okay. So, um, Great job, Nigeria. Great job. Oh, good thank night. you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. That's true. It is. It is only 833, huh? Yes. 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 Be hey, safe. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Wait, don't cheer too much. You may put me in a position to have to do this more. <laughs> hey, sir. Not 10 o'clock. Not 1030. It's 830. We're happy. We're all happy. Goodbye. All right. Good night. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night.